Crystal here. Welcome to another video with the Interactive Immersive HQ. And a few weeks ago, I did a video talking about what I bring for my toolkit for a art residency and what equipment and what I usually do to create a project. And I'll, if you missed that video, I'll put that link in the description below. But in this video, I am going to cover about how do I usually approach on a residency or a given project that is has a, um, a specific timeline and is more personal to, to myself. And I hope this could be helpful and maybe I'll kind of go on a tangent on different random, different random um, tips and such. And because it's going to be a pretty casual video. And right now what you're seeing is actually the documentation of my project um, that I did while I was in Italy. So first of all, for any project, you should figure out what type of boundaries you have. So what does the space have? What the facility provide? What is a timeline and what is deliverable? In my experience, oftentimes art residencies don't have too many digital artists, especially not so much in a real time installation space. So that means oftentimes they won't have experience and understanding of the different equipments you need. So you can often ask them before you get there, what can they do and even look at their previous archives of previous artists and see if there's any artists that does similar work. And if they were able to seem like from the, the documentations or photos, if they were able to get the type of equipment that you wanted and you can ask the space and you can even reach out to that artist and ask what's how, how did they felt, um, working there and did they feel supported and maybe also if they were able to borrow equipment where did they go to get the equipment so i knew when i i messaged them it's like hey I'm gonna do an installation well, do you guys have projectors do you guys have speakers do you have a space where i can do an installation in can i block off the windows is there access to Wi-Fi or Ethernet and um, can I, how many power outlets those are? Those are um, what I did beforehand so I know what to suspect. So they had one Pico projector. So I know, okay, unless I'm going to rent a projector out from a projector house, then I will need to do a project that doesn't have too much light or provide needs too much light. And I can block off the windows, cool. So I will suspect that early on that maybe we should like collect cardboard and have gaffers tape to do that. And um, also I was looking at different videos like, okay, the scene there's projectors shouldn't work. So this is something that is probably is acceptable for the space. So what is a timeline? So our residencies can kind of come from a few weeks to even a year. And for this one, I had one month. So I did some things beforehand to prepare so I wouldn't be feel like I was in a rush in a one month time. And personally, how I broke up the month is week one, I did more on research, research, and um, I made these prisms. So also like pattern pattern research and pattern making and doing the floor plans, understanding what is the space I need and what do I need uh, more stuff I need. And also getting equipments with, for me, which is mostly on Amazon um, and Amazon shipping it over to the space. Week two, I focus on building the models, testing the projection, like what type of projections look good, especially if I'm working with a, a device that's not mine and creating the content and uh, created these generative content for the project. And week three, I focus more on building the, the touch designer system and doing tests in the space. And week four on setup, documentation, um, audio, advertising, for the show and optimizing the hell out of this project. <laughs> and, um, and also, 
Another thing I mentioned is like very important is understanding the deliverable. So for this, it was a one day showcase show. So knowing what's a one day showcase show, um, I thought, okay, I'm not going to go rent a projector all the way in an hour and a half in bus uh, train ride to get a, a projector if it's only for one day. If it was a longer, then I'll put more effort and, and have a higher budget and get like a bigger projector. But I feel like but if it's just one day, I don't feel like it's worth doing that and I'll use a Pico projector. And in retrospect, and um, I had an art residency that was like a one month show that was in museums. So I would know, okay, that means I'm not going to leave my project, my, my laptop there because I need to use my laptop. So I brought a mini PC and have the show run on mini PC, but also thinking of what happens if something goes wrong. So I can't, I won't be there every day. So having be able to have an ethernet cable with, I can remote in if I need to uh, debug anything and also making a very detailed documentation for the people in the space, how to they turn it on, turn on the projects and maybe some common um, things that could go wrong, like what to do in case of the audio doesn't turn on. What does you do in case you see a mouse on the, on the frame? What do you do in case of X, Y, and Z? And, more of those details, the more uh, more everyone feels more secure, and and it's good to think of what everything that can go wrong before it goes wrong, <laughs> and um, yeah, and I usually have like something note taking that I can provide that just kind of jots off the ideas. I need for the project. So like I had this sketch, this um, notebook, and this was kind of just like dedicated for this art residency. And I can share you some of the, my notes. So I build these prisms and here are my, my notes on how many shapes I need and how does it work on building them. And I did all these different different tests um, first with paper and trying to get them all in the same scale and understanding how big I want wanted everything to be. And here I kind of like early in the research era, ideas thinking of what I'm thinking of, uh, what things are I want to convey, nature, texture. So I have 3D scan, should I involve buildings, light, color, refraction, reflections, movements, just kind of just I just would throw out ideas of um, things I'm thinking about. And here kind of um, a short of, uh, of just like plans, like, okay, I'm going to do nature shots and build the prisms, but knowing week three, I'm going to go to do a little trip to Venice. So I need to do more stuff on week two, but also what can I do week three? So building the systems, where to set up, understanding the floor plan, and then knowing to set up on the last week. And over here, you can see in these prism shapes that there's like, they're make up of different sub shapes. I was very interested of having like, oh, a square and a triangle equals this, and then a polygon and a square equals that, and trying to organize these in 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 a way. And here was like an early on kind of rough, rough sketch of how I would lay it out. So having a pedestal that rotates and, and having prism there and having different shapes, but where would the projector needs to be and how it shine through and where I'd kind of just getting all the ideas out there and having like a rough floor plan. And here is actually like a sketch on uh, how I would organize my touch network. So, okay, have these shapes, having to crop it, crop top, and then analyze it and uh, what, what different shapes triggers what, and then the physical shapes, like how, how does um, it, it work? And maybe I'll give you a little bit of context of what, what the project actually is, but also be helpful. But here is kind of um, a top overview, rough drawing of like, okay, I have people come in and they'll go up the stairs and then they can pick one of these prisms and drop it here. So they're like 
this is two, they go one here, they go two, and then it projects onto this wall and then it comes and then you can go to three to C. So the project, I had three different prisms which each one represented a different thing. The first one was home, which is generative images of Los Angeles, where I'm from. And the second one is present, which was collections of, of generative uh, images of Tofia, which was the village I was in in Italy. And the third one is um, kind of unknown of the past, the future, and where you all come uh, go to next. So that was a collection of different images from Asia, from Europe, from US, and, and mixing it through. And up here, I had a sensor. Well, it was actually an AR camera uh, where I was able to detect which one is lifted. So I had a sensor up here to know which one is um, the user lifts up. And then once it's lifted, it will trigger different the different corresponding visuals and sound for the prism. And then the user can place it on his pedestal and it would play and project through onto, onto the wall. And they have option to come here to side over here where I have a iPad to show what is the content that's projected because once it's projected onto the prism, it is, it is pretty much abstracted. So, but you can see the unabstracted form on the tablet and also there's another um, sensor on the bottom where it can detect the person's silhouette and have that them be layered over the content so um, yeah and kind of giving in that that background you can kind of see this again so she has one of the prisms she lifts it puts it on here and he's looking at the different content on the tablet um, that's projected onto the wall. A good thing to you know, have early on is really understanding the space. Like for me, for the stage, I love this kind of architecture <laughs> terminology, <laughs> but the kind of like divot onto the wall. And I use that to really use that for the project. So I had it kind of move to where it would project kind of perfectly into that space. And I was helpful that I used a LiDAR app called Scanverse and actually did a HQ blog talking about how LiDAR, LiDAR apps work. They can actually put it in Touch Designer. Also link it down into the description below. And here is actually the scan. So this is zoom out. This is a 13th century church in the village in Sabina. You can see. Over here on the side, actually they have a wall of fresco mural. And in the scan, it has all these instruments and stuff inside, but in the show, it was empty. But here, I can see that, okay, I want to block off this window. This is where I'll have the items. And in the middle is where I'll project the thing. And, and this is very helpful to get a better overview of the space. And through the app, I actually can measure the, do the measurements of um, the distance on the uh, distance of the space through the app. So very helpful to have a LiDAR scan of the space. And now it's so easy because you can just use your phone. <laughs> and with that, another like, I'm just going to give like little tidbits of, of things that I uh, might be helpful when you're coming into a project is being prepared with with stuff. Um, in the 
toolkit video, I mentioned the use of, I brought gaffer's tapes and I find gaffer's tapes can be so helpful to have because I won't rip off the paint, but having a black and white gaffer's tape. So I use black gaffer's tape to help for black off the windows and then white gaffer's tape to seal the sensors because the walls were white. And the best way I would say to block off windows is using cardboard or the most accessible way is having cardboard and just taping it down, which for this, especially using a paper projector, it wasn't very bright. So blocking off of the windows was very important for me. And also, if you're ever having a project, especially you're just running on your laptop, and you notice that you're dropping frames and your audio is dropping, I advise to have your audio in a second file, a touch file. So then that file will just strictly doing audio. And then you wouldn't uh, when visual is dropping frames, the audio wouldn't drop. That's something that I think, um, especially when you're working on your laptop, it's a really good tip to have on your projects. The last kind of little tip that I would give is also when you're working on a laptop, you're doing an installation, make sure to set your, your screen and sleep to never, um, especially like if you're plugged in, it's like never sleep when you're plugged in. Because it would suck if you're having your wonderful show, people are jamming, they love everything, and then suddenly it goes dark because your your laptop went to sleep. <laughs> and um, those are just kind of from past experience things that I find quite helpful. Oh, and thanks for listening in. I hope this was kind of helpful. Uh, these are kind of things that I wish I knew coming into art residencies and things that I found were helpful uh, for my process now. And if you, if there's one thing that you really stuck out to you that you found especially helpful, well, let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.